Today in Man in the Golden Suit, we have BMW's world famous R1200 GS with all the options available put on this bike. Let's see what it does. BMW is famous for its GS. Some like it, some hate it, some people think that this is the world standard. And for most of the BMW lovers, this bike is the mainstay, is the this bike is the flagship of BMW. They think that this is the finest from Bavaria. Well, let's start with a small story. In 2013, at the launch of this bike, the expectations were high. And after some unfortunate incidents, they decided to modify this bike a little bit. So today in October of 2016, we have the last version of this bike, most refined, most elegant, with all the problems sorted out, everything is running smoothly as they say. The last incarnation of BMW's R1200GS does have liquid cooling with the boxer engine. It has a much narrower, narrower engine, thanks to that we can go filter in traffic easily. They changed how to feed the engine. It used to be on a rather diagonal on a rider on a rather diagonal angle. Now it's much more direct. It has this liquid, liquid cooling heads. It has wet clutch which is much more easier to change and much smoother on the control. It has the clutch now on the front. It used to be on the back. On a, on a dry clutch now it's wet and multiplate perfect setup really modern now it has a much more refined gearbox the gearbox used to be on the BMWs especially with these shaft driven bikes was a pain in the ass I mean it was clunky it was noisy it was quite strange and it couldn't match the standards of the time now this has a much refined gearbox, but even with those refinements, this gearbox is still not on the par with the Japanese or some Italian bikes. notice first first of all the design now the design has changed we used to look at these things uh, being a sports bike rider and consider them as being mere tractors on two wheels now they changed it and it became much more aggressive much more modern now it has this aesthetics of Bavaria I mean German aesthetics we can live with that I think so we have the radiators on the front, these two radiators for two cylinders. We have this nice smooth nose with angular design, with plastics and aluminum coming out of everywhere. It has this HID lamps. It has this hand-driven screen 
that we can lower and get it up higher, even on, on the ride, although we do not suggest doing that too much. We have each and every electronics available put on this bike, from traction control to electronic suspension adjustment, from intelligent lights to heated grips, from using modes, different heights for different uses, everything available. We even do have keyless go for the fuel tank. So what do we notice first? When we put the leg up and sit on it, wow, it's, it's still the GS standard of comfiness still here. This comfort level is quite astonishing. And when we grab hold this 238 kilograms of mass, quite on top, with 20 liters of fuel in the tank, it's, it's a substantial bike. We have each and every command available here, but the buttons are very strange. These buttons, actually they are not buttons. These are electronic circuit board switches. So these are not real buttons. So we, for example, when we switch on the, when we put the, when we do horn, it's, it has this delay. Now look, everything is now open. It has this slight delay because everything is going through this bus system, the central nerve of the bike. This bike has plenty of senses in each and everywhere. It is sensing whatever is going on. this ride comfy, Bavarians, these Germans, they put this trademark of telelever on the front and paralever on the back. Thanks to these, the comfort level is quite high for a motorcycle. It is some kind of a comfy SUV of some kind on two wheels. But this comfort has a price. Along with the comfort comes the feeling, the lack of feeling, so to say. Because we are used to riding bikes in a sporty manner, we are used to having this sensation of grip from the front end. With the telelever system, we don't have that. We still do not have that. And to enhance the levels of comfort, Bavarians put these rubber mounts on top of each and every telelever leg. So the grip level cannot be adjusted or cannot be measured, cannot be sensed easily. The bike has senses, but we do not. One other thing BMW usually does is this. They used to have this strange signal buttons, three buttons for turn signals. Now they adopted the normal standard, globally accepted standard of left hand, three function button. What became different is, here on the back end, is the side of the paralever. They used to have the paralever on the right and the exhaust system on the left, opposite of all the world standard. Now they adopted the world standard of exhaust on the right and drive shaft and everything on the left hand side, which is, which became quite good. Now we can picture and film the bikes from the right. So BMW did this GS bikes for the last 20, 26 years now, no, 25 years now. So before that, there was this regular front end GSs with R80 and stuff like that. But all these Gelände und Straße thing and how to say the off-road and on-road thing, BMW achieved, we don't know how, this clientele of old man's image. In the 
the last 20, 25 years, BMW has been selling these GS bikes by shipload. And it became a world standard, these bikes. From Japan to Italy, from Britain to Austria, everybody was looking and envying a part of this cake of touring bikes, adventure touring bikes. Everybody wanted a part on this game. And BMW has been leading the scene with this bike. And they were, how to say, defining in some sort the standards of this class. So they also somehow achieved to get a clientele of their own. Some old men above 40s who were looking for some comfort who were looking for some bikes, but in a more safe environment, in a safer way of riding these things. So the GS was the perfect answer for them. So we achieved this BMW guy image. And they were quite, uh, how to say, far from us, from us Apaches of sports bikes. So these guys, these guys started to act a bit different from us. And whenever we look at them, we some kind of see lords on these bikes. R1200 GS. We did like the comfort level. We did like this equipment quality and finish. We did like the image of the bike. And sometimes we hated it, but anyway, that's another story. We did like all the refinements over the, over the old versions. What we didn't like is difficulty to clean this thing. The price the lack of front-end feel, and the lack of, how to say, sentiments, the feelings of sportiness, the lack of excitement that comes standard with most of the other bikes, but lacking in this one. We felt like we've been isolated from the ground, we've been isolated from the weather, we've been isolated by some Bavarian engineers and we've been riding in a bubble. So, so these are the things we think about this thing. It's a nice bike, it's a world standard bike, but not to our taste. <laughs>